Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will start in five minutes. We ask that you turn off all electronic devices. And please, during the ceremony, don't approach the stage to take pictures. Take them from your seats if you can. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the procession of graduates and the entrance of the stage party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation.
Good morning. I invite you to join me for the invocation this morning. Our Father God, we gather today in an atmosphere of excitement, celebration, pride, and success. We rejoice today with these 43 soon-to-be VMI graduates and their families. Today, a dream comes true, a goal is accomplished, and a milestone is surpassed. The ring on their finger and the diploma in their hand will forever symbolize the work, sacrifice, sweat, and tears, bonds, and memories that have comprised their VMI experience. But today, Lord, they begin a new journey, a new race. Let them run with endurance the race that is set before them. May they pursue excellence, exemplify servant leadership. May they always stand firmly on the principles of truth, faith, honor, and integrity. Grant them success, guard their course, protect their way. May they discern the things that are right and just and fair. May your wisdom enter their hearts and your knowledge be pleasant to their souls. May they have discretion that protects them and understanding that guards them. Grant that they may be bold and confident in their endeavors. Allow them to attain the potential that you've designed for each of them. But above all else, give them a faith in you that will never fail. And we ask this all in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today for the 2017 December commencement exercises of VMI. Joining me on the stage today are the President of the Board of Visitors, Mr. William Boland, VMI Class of 73, VMI Superintendent, General J.H. Benford P. III, VMI Class of 1962, VMI's Deputy Superintendent for Finance, Administration, and Support, Colonel Dallas B. Clark, VMI Class of 1999, VMI's, VMI's Registrar, Colonel Janet Pataglia, VMI's Chaplain, Colonel Robert Bob Phillips, Senior, VMI Class of 1987, and our commencement speaker, Mr. Eugene Williams, VMI Class of 1974. So, uh, I'm going to give a few remarks uh, to set the framework for this uh, ceremony. Uh, this is an increasingly deserted post in the most hallowed of its halls in a community rich with historical significance. It's comprised of exceptional citizens who do everything, everything they can to preserve the learning environments of two of this nation's most prestigious colleges. It's nestled among some of the most beautiful valleys and hills and rivers in this nation. And every military, athletic, and academic leader at VMI and the most important people in your lives are focused like lasers on each of you 43 individuals. All that's missing is snow. There should have been snow. It should have happened this morning, not unseasonable warmth and some drizzle. No event held less than one week from Christmas should be without it. We, VMI leadership, conferred, though, and decided to proceed with the graduation in spite of the good weather. So, three short points. First, JM Hall is the right place for each of you to graduate. Second, today's ceremony may have the feel of a group event, but it is not. It is a ceremony meant to honor your ability to act as an individual. And third, this ceremony is an act of reciprocity. VMI awards you your diploma, and in turn, you accept the responsibility of acting honorably in defense of nation, community, and family. So, the venue. In my association, which started at the age of five, there have been four principal commencement venues. Outside on the grass, VMI's first gymnasium, Cock Hall, Cameron Hall, a massive basketball summit that can hold quite a crowd, and of course, this particular hall, J.M. Hall. Outside, the sun and rain can play havoc with crowds and scheduling. I personally graduated from Cock Hall. At the December graduation in 2015, I, I described the faint scent of perspiration that still hung in the air during that day. But I also recall going through the ring with my date in Cock Hall. Within minutes of having given me my ring, she excused herself, and I never saw her again, ever. As you know, we hold our May graduations in Cameron Hall, built to hold crowds and celebrate team victories. Just last week, our cadets crushed their opponent, an outcome to which the collective fury of cadets in red t-shirts contributed. But J.M. Hall was erected to meet our spiritual needs, 
a place to find our individual voices. It is where we first gather as a rat mass to hear the meaning of honor from those that exhibit it act by act themselves during the course of their cadetship. It is where we first organized as a class to debate matters of cadet comportment, witness marriage, mourn death, and for you lucky 43, where we graduate. In this place, the voice of a solitary leader is surrounded by respectful silence. That's good. Be prepared for a lot less civility when you leave here. It is the right place from which to graduate. Part two. Don't confuse this with a class or group event. You have grown used to group associations, from rat mass to regiment on parade, to the ring figure class, and eventually to leaders of barracks. But those groups all lead to this solitary outcome. Individual men and women poised to break ranks, one from the other. Your apprenticeship is over. There were no shortcuts. No grades were rounded up. No rules realigned, no number ones reduced to five, one, and fives to make this day possible for you. And most of you know that individually. On your left and behind you are the leaders of the faculty, the ROTC detachments, the combat staff, and the athletic staff. If you leave confident that you can lead, then that is so because this team has created the conditions for perhaps the nation's toughest, most strenuous undergraduate experience that is, exists. If you are looking for evidence that you can succeed on terms that do not favor you, then look no further than the diploma that you are about to receive. My final observation. Researchers from Cornell University conducted a study to determine the optimal location from which to survive a zombie apocalypse. They described a place just like Lexington, which must have reassured parents. But when you accept this diploma, you will have agreed in public, in the presence of your dear family and friends and mentors who are achingly proud of you, to leave this relatively safe place and meet the bad guys head on. You will, by your individual acts of honor, serve as this nation's collective defense. And as you seek examples of what honorable behavior looks like, you will recall the events from your own cadetship, or you will follow in the distinctly individual footsteps of the extraordinary Mr. Gene Williams, who will soon address you on his own. Sir? Well, Mr. Bolin, graduating first classmen, faculty and staff, our coaches, families and friends, good morning. Let me also add my congratulations to those expressed by the Dean and others today. Having watched your progress since matriculation, knowing that you have chosen the harder path than most college students, I want to say that I and the entire VMI community are so very proud of each of you. And as the Dean said, whereas the May ceremony is held in Cameron Hall, this ceremony is held in Jackson Memorial Hall where VMI graduations were held for over 100 years before we moved them to Cock and Cormac and Cameron because of the large size of classes. Your graduation in this historic hall, therefore, continues a long and very special tradition. From here, you will go forth, carrying the ideals of VMI, and I know that you will make your mark in the world. Stay in touch with your brother rats and with the Institute and return as often as you're able. I congratulate you and salute you, and you have our very best wishes from all of the Institute family for the years ahead. I now have the great pleasure of introducing your speaker for this occasion, Mr. Eugene Williams, better known to colleagues, friends, and fellow VMI graduates as Gene, and in his playing great football days at VMI, known by the nickname of Mean Gene, which actually never really applied to this mild-mannered gentleman. Mr. Williams is best known to us here at VMI and in this community as the founder and the executive director of the College Orientation Workshop, or you perhaps know the short name as CAL, an educational enrichment, leadership development, character enhancement, and physical fitness program for at-risk high school students 
and it's conducted each year at the Institute. The College Orientation Workshop now is in its 35th, 31st highly successful year. Jean came to VMI from Tho No Tosa, Florida, pretty close, Jean, and majored in mathematics. I should mention that he received an, an appointment to the United States Military Academy and chose VMI instead. And during his four years at the Institute, he was a scholarship athlete and received all Southern Conference and All-American recognition. He was selected to play in the All-American Bowl game in January 1974 in Tampa, Florida, and was the recipient of the Henry Fairfax Ayers Most Valuable Player Award in 1974. Within the Corps of Cadets, he attained the rank of Lieutenant. Mr. Williams graduated in 1974 with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, and after graduation, he went on to, learn, to earn an MBA in Washington, D.C. This led him to a career with Verizon Communications, from which he retired in 2012 after more than 38 years of service as its Director of Engineering for Virginia and Director for Portions of West Virginia. And in that capacity, Mr. Williams was responsible for all of the network planning and engineering functions in those jurisdictions. Over the years, he held a number of different positions in the company in a number of different states. But perhaps most interesting, for a temporary period, he was assigned to New York City as part of the restoration effort after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Service to others and his community have filled his adult life as a reader in elementary schools in Baltimore, coach of Little League football and baseball teams, as a member of Big Brothers in Washington, D.C. in the capital area, and for this community work, he has received numerous awards and recognitions. In addition to all of the above, he has the special distinction of having been the youngest appointee to the VMI Board of Visitors in 1978. He is also a past director of the VMI Alumni Association and served as a member of the Board of Governors of the VMI Foundation. Gene lives in Mar Mar Marriott Ottsville, Maryland with his wife, Margaret, they have two adult children, a son Bradley and Chesley, who's here today. Please welcome Mr. Gene Williams, VMI graduate of the class of 1974. I think a sterling example of a citizen soldier who's given so much back to our nation, its communities, and the Institute. Mr. Williams. Thank you all very much for that welcome. You all have no idea how grateful I am to have this high honor to share this very important day with you. As I listened to that introduction, I felt a sense of remorse for not having done more to fully deserve all that has been implied. However, I will say this, even though I am the beneficiary of a lot of undeserved recognition, I do thank God for the rumors. Thank you, General P, for the invitation to speak to the graduates today. I know that you are aware of how much I cherish my experiences and relationships with the Institute and the people who have been shaped by it. Speaking to the graduates today is a great honor, and I'm truly appreciative and humble. I want to also express my appreciation to General Smith, Dean of the Faculty and Deputy Superintendent for Academics, the Honorable Bill Bowling, President of the VMI Board of Visitors and my football teammate here at VMI, distinguished guests and supporters, and to the outstanding faculty and staff here at the Institute. There are many elements that contribute to the greatness of the VMI experience, and the faculty and staff are right up there at the very top, although they don't get all that they deserve. These folks are not paid enough to do this for the money. So you have my undying respect and admiration for all that you have done for the young folks that you have helped mold over the years. But most of all, 
I want to thank and give a huge shout out to the parents, the families, and to the network of supporters of these graduates. Without you, none of the success achieved by these fine young people would have been realized. For every strain of a chin or a grueling hour spent at RDC that uh, uh, a lowly rat had to endure, or penalty tours walked in the dead of winter by a non-compliant cadet, there was a mom, a dad, a grandparent, sending up scores of prayers on that cadet's behalf. I know this because I was that lowly rat and I was that non-compliant knucklehead and my mom sent up her full allocation of prayers uh, in just six weeks. So I hope that these graduates will properly recognize your contribution to their success up to and including this special day. Now, I know that you all have much more exciting things to do today than to hear me talk. Therefore, I am going to do something that is atypical for me when I'm in front of an attractive, captive audience like we have today. I'm going to be very brief. I will tell you now that if my dear wife was here, she, she wouldn't believe this because she knows how hard it will be for me to practice brevity, but I am going to keep my word and be brief today. By the way, my wife is not here uh, because we just recently received word that her sister in Trinidad passed away on Monday and she's home planning our travels there tomorrow, but she does regret not being here today. So today I want to talk to uh, the young graduates about three and only three things. First, I want to congratulate you all for accepting the high challenge of the VMI experience and successfully mastering all that was put before you. Not many people in this entire universe have accomplished what you've done. That makes you very unique and deserving of high praise. However, that doesn't make you special, but I'll address that in a moment. I have a question. Do you all know how many have people have graduated from VMI over the 178 years of its, its, its existence? Have you ever thought about that? Well, the answer is a whopping 22,435, give or take a couple. And of that number, 15,760 or so are still living. Now, these numbers include the 43 of you who will be graduating today. To me, this is absolutely amazing. And to put this into context, this past spring, Virginia Tech graduated 4,800 undergraduate students. So if you take those numbers and extrapolate them over the course of five years, Tech would graduate more students than VMI has in 178 years. Be very proud of what you've accomplished. You are among a blessed few who chose the path less traveled. And you have an opportunity to place your stamp on the world in a significant way. There is something truly amazing about choosing door number three, where you know the big bear resides, but you choose it anyway. So well over a third of you have commissioned in the armed services this week. Thank you in advance for your planned service to our nation and to the world. For the non-commissioning graduates, I know that as you begin your careers and your life pursuits, you will also find ways to contribute to the public good and help make the world better than you found it. So to you all, I say bravo seven times. Why seven? Well, if you do something at least seven times, you're, it proves that you're really committed to it and you believe in what you're saying or doing. So. Bravo to you seven times. Secondly, I want to tell you why I believe, despite all that I've just stated, that you're not yet special, but you can be. Yes, you've endured and achieved much more than your peers at other institutions. There's simply no doubt about that. You've been pushed so far out of your comfort zone that you should require a passport. You've proven that you can take a lick and keep on ticking. 
you can self-report and see the little piddling privileges that others would mark taken away for weeks at a time. And you have demonstrated the courage and the character to choose personal honor over personal gain and stand eye to eye opposed to those who do not. But if you want to truly be special, you'll need to take this wonderful academic leadership and character education that you've received and run towards the problems that you see in the world and work really hard to solve them. I plead with you not to be a high-minded, well-educated voyeur. Rather, be fully engaged and accept that sometimes you'll fail and you'll fail again because not all problems have a good ending. Some things are just tough and they don't always work out well. But there are some troubling issues that you can do something about. You've been sufficiently trained and you're well equipped to address these if you choose to. Economic inequality across the planet, racism, dishonesty and hypocrisy in the halls of power, man's constant inhumanity to each other, and young people dumbing down to fit in are all things that are within your ability to impact in a positive way. And young people like you will have to be the agents of the change that you want to see. Us old dogs have not shown that we are fully capable and ready to, to get the job done. So, want to be special? Get into the fray and help make this world better than you found it, especially if you are as good and as capable as you and we think you are. Know that what you say and do matters a lot, and please don't be a bystander. In speaking about apartheid a number of years ago and how good people permitted that dreadful system to flourish, Bishop Desmond Tutu uh, stated that if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you've chosen the side of the oppressor. He said that if an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse, and that you say that you are neutral about that situation, your neutrality will fall hollow to the mouse and will not be appreciated at all. So get into the fray, be special. Now look, I know that you all are still very young and there's still a lot of fun and games to be had, but plan to be fully engaged for what is just, what is right, and be special. Now, I know that cadets don't have a lot of time to watch TV, but with uh, the ubiquity of social media, I'm sure that you've seen enough recent examples of the decay that seems to be engulfing aspects of our society. The need for VMI men and women of character who are capable of stepping into the gap has never been greater. You have a wonderful opportunity to be special and to impact the world in a significant way. Now, the final thing I want to do is to share a simple little story with you. Hopefully, it's not too simple for you soon to be college graduates. But there is an important message here, and I hope that you'll get it and that you'll incorporate it in your life. It is also relevant to my appeal to you to, to go out and be special. Now, you may feel that the issues that I mentioned earlier that need your attention are just too numerous and daunting for you to impact in a meaningful way. Okay, to this, I remind you of the little boy who was walking along the beach early in the morning, lovingly tossing baby starfish and sea turtles back into the surf to save them before the sun rose in the eastern sky. There were thousands upon thousands of starfish and baby sea turtles along the shore, and there was only a short time before the sunrise. So as the little boy went about his task, a wise-looking elderly gentleman approached in the distance. When the two were within speaking range, the old man asked the little boy, what are you doing out so early in the morning? The little boy said that he was out saving baby starfish and sea turtles. The old man said that but there are thousands, 
tens of thousands of these things along the beach. And the sun is going to be up in an hour or so. And all of these creatures are going to die for sure. He says there are just too many of them for what you are doing to make a difference. At that moment, the little boy bent down, picked up a little baby starfish and sea turtle, and gently tossed it back into the surf. Little boy then turned to the man and said, made a difference for those two. So please know that your words and your works have the power of life and death. Make sure you make them for life. Keep growing. Keep working hard to be special. You've had a great start at this wonderful institution, and you're on the right path. More practice is needed, and you're about to get your opportunity to shine when and where it really counts. I know that you're up to the task. You are VMI women and men of character. Now, you don't have to have a, to rescue the whole world all at once. You just need to do it one little starfish and sea turtle at a time. Now, I thank you very much for your attention and for choosing my beloved VMI as your college of choice. You've enriched the place by having been here. May you have great success in this new chapter in your life. And for those of you who will be in harm's way in the course of your service to our nation, may the good Lord bless you, continue to smile upon your ground, and keep you safe. Congratulations to all of you on your achievements. Welcome to the ranks of the MI graduates. We've been waiting for you. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity to share in your special day. Happy holidays to you and your family, and I say, never say die. Did you? So, Gene, on. On behalf of a grateful institute, you are a special person, and there's a place on the faculty for you anytime you wish to come back here. Congratulations. Thanks. Well done. You don't pay enough. <laughs> Will, the candidates for graduation please rise. That's a bit premature. The academic board is presented to the Board of Visitors. All candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree and all candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree, all of whom have been certified to have completed the requirements for graduation from the Virginia Military Institute. Sir? By the authority of law vested in the Board of Visitors and faculty, I confer upon each of you a diploma and testimony of your being a graduate of the Virginia Military Institute and award you the bachelor's degree appropriate to your field of study. Please be seated and come forward as your name is called. General Smith, will you please read the names of our graduates? Ryan Walker Francis, Bachelor of Arts in Economics and Business, Miter in Psychology, a distinguished graduate. <laughs> Brittany Marie Wycheck, Bachelor of Arts in English, Concentration in Literary Studies, Concentration in Rhetoric and Writing, a distinguished graduate. Alton Lamar Martin, the third Bachelor of Arts in International Studies, a distinguished graduate. Yeah. 
Juan Montalvo, the fourth, Bachelor of Arts in International Studies, minor in Spanish, second lieutenant, United States Army, and a distinguished graduate. The following cadets will receive their Bachelor of Science degrees in biology. Mitchell Peterson Dannon, with distinction, concentration in ecology and organismal sciences, minor in history. Patrick Joseph Doucette, with distinction, concentration in biochemistry and molecular biology, minor in chemistry. Shabaka Masa Johns, minor in exercise science. Luke Kent Johnson, second lieutenant, United States Army. Tyler William Tharp. The following two cadets will receive their Bachelors of Science degrees in Civil Engineering. Preston Lee Duff. Robert J. Masters, Jr., with distinction. The following three graduates will receive Bachelors of Science degrees in Computer and Information Sciences. Ryan Howard Asuncion. Matthew Conley Kurnow, Second Lieutenant, United States Army. Christopher Randolph de Steuben. The following cadet will receive a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical and Computer Engineering. Joseph Scott Bauman, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. The following four cadets will receive Bachelors of Science degrees in Mechanical Engineering. Marvin Burns, Jr., minor in mathematics, second lieutenant, United States Army. Jedediah McKinley Harris, minor in mathematics, ensign, United States Navy. And Alexander Marvin Midkiff. Barrett Martin Daniel Wheelton. The following cadet will receive a Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology. Killian James Carey, with distinction, minor in Exercise Science and a minor in Leadership Studies. The following two cadets will receive Bachelor's of Arts degree in Biology. Xavier Kai Greenfield, with distinction. Matthew Barlow Milner, minor in Exercise Science. The following 11 cadets will graduate with Bachelors of Arts degrees in Economics and Business. Austin Walker Bailey, Second Lieutenant, United States Army. Corey Tyler Bullard. Sebastian Alonzo Chavez, with distinction, minor in Spanish. Andrew McNeil Gibbons with distinction, concentration in global management, second lieutenant, United States Army. Walker Branyan Hayes. Daniel Seth Mallory.
Tyrell Reed Mason. Stephen Dewan Miller, the second. William Vaughn Nunn, second lieutenant, United States Army. Grant Jacob Sanchez. Jordan Anthony Veal. The following four cadets will receive Bachelor's of Arts degrees in English. Jonathan Thomas de Steuben, with distinction, concentration and literary studies, concentration and rhetoric and writing. Alexander Diaz, Jr. Joseph Brady Matthews, Minor in French. <laughs> Chelsea Monique Sayas, Concentration in Rhetoric and Writing. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts degree in History, that's for Michael Blaine Lafin. The following three cadets will receive Bachelor of Arts degrees in International Studies. Matthew Christopher Johnson with distinction, Second Lieutenant, United States Army. Zachary K. Johnson, Second Lieutenant, United States Army. Kevin Hunter O'Shaughnessy with distinction. The following cadet will receive a Bachelor of Arts degree in Modern Languages and Cultures. Thomas Gerald Moriarty, Second Lieutenant, United States Army. And the final cadet will receive a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology. Gabriela Rebecca Galvez. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2017 December graduates of the Virginia Military Institute. So, let's go eat in Moody Hall. Okay, we'll try to make our way to the bus. Thanks, Janet.